I'll write this plus CBDCs equals XRP. Yeah, the Ripple plan is revealed, ladies and gentlemen, and it no longer is just about interior documents. It's no longer about PDF files that are meant for other people's eyes and all the things that the hard work and discipline uh, researchers do in this in this uh, arena. This is about public knowledge at this point, and it couldn't be more exciting. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro and get into this. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here. And we're going to start with some comments from Brad Garlinghouse, Stuart Alderati. Then we're going to move to some other material. And then we're going to look at exactly what Ripple is doing on the public front, on what their pursuits are. And we're going to realize that because we know that Specifically, when it comes to uh, direction of a company and things that they pursue, they don't pursue things and and not do them. That's not how businesses are run. You know, if you have a cleaning business, you're in the business of finding more houses to clean, right? So with that simple understanding, let's go ahead and get into this because Ripple is going to reveal exactly what their business is. And it's pretty amazing. Brad Garlinghouse responds to Stuart Alderati's tweet here. Let's start with Stuart, Stuart Alderati's tweet. The data doesn't lie. Vast majority of BTC's network infrastructure, chips, mining, pool software are located in China or created by Chinese companies. This is not decentralization. And he goes on. I'll save you the rest of it because you get it. It's really about the mining control and the fact that, you know, it's obviously a flawed network because of all the things being done in China as a software, too. And then it really says, you know, there's a weak infrastructure here. And not to mention, we know that proof of work uses so much energy, it's not efficient. So Brad Garlinghouse says, as a Bitcoin holder, I want it to succeed and believe in its use case store of value. Same as I believe in XRP's distinct use case payments. This also means being aware of potential weaknesses like mining control in China. For future progress, these two are not mutually exclusive. Can't turn a blind eye. That's where we're at here, right? And I certainly agree with Brad Garlinghouse and his point that he's making. He's absolutely right. You know, it, even on the investor level, if this is what you're going to do, then you better know the ups and the ins and outs of whatever that investment is, right? And the fact of the matter is, it's something you can't turn a blind eye to, and it has issues with mining control in China and all the things that Stuart Alderati talked about. Where I find the narrative crossing paths here is is really in this. You know, we've seen a lot of work done by the Financial Stability Board with cross-border payments, and obviously the Federal Reserve and the IMF and everyone who's anyone in the cross-border payments central bank world uh, and regulatory agencies on the international level like the FSB. Here they break down how they've been working to improve cross-border payments. And I'm just going to go through some of the bullet points here on the on the document to show you what's going on. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is that they talk about determining the quantitative global targets for addressing challenges of cost, speed, transparency, and access. And then they talk about developing the framework for stakeholders to establish more granular granular level service level, excuse me, agreements, ground floor stuff, right? None of the pie in the sky, like this is how great it could be down the road. They're talking about boots on the ground, contracts in hand, agreements from people right on ground level. Identify where, sir, where achieving more consistent implementation of international standards and guidance is needed, which is a standard. Obviously, you're going to want to do that. But when we come around to some of these other bullet points that I'm looking at here, one of which was uh, um, 
right here, facilitate technical standards, common messages, formats such as ISO 2022, and application programming interfaces for data exchange. Now, we all know that Ripple has been tied into uh, or brought on to the Standards Body Committee for ISO 2022 as the first member to explore uh, implementation for distributed ledger technology. I re remind you in this conversation that Brian Brooks said to us just the other day that I covered if someone's saying blockchain, if someone's saying DLT, and you've heard them say the phrase, oh, I like blockchain, but I don't like cryptos, they don't really understand what they're saying because the truth is, is you don't have one without the other. That's what Brian Brooks was explaining, and he's absolutely right. So when you hear this code language or talk about distributed ledger technology or just blockchain, it isn't so. It is the language they're using so you don't understand exactly what they're saying. Now, coming around here, determining the scope for new multilateral platforms, global stable coin arrangements. Here's that global stable coin arrangement again. Does anybody know of one? I know one that could really fit the role from what I've read, and it's XRP. But there's no such thing right now as a global stable coin that you could point to because none that we know of have gotten that designation publicly. However, one's going to get it, at least one, if not more than one, because the Financial Stability Board that is connected to the G20 and the G7 is making rules about how to regulate it and supervise it, although it isn't here yet. I think that's a pretty profound thought when you let it sink in. And obviously, this is about uh, our global stablecoin arrangements and central bank digital currencies to address challenges to cross-border payments faced without compromising supervisory regulatory standards, obviously. So while all this is being said about Bitcoin and being long on Bitcoin for a store of value, right? And then knowing right here, this is Kristalina Georgieva, IMF director, who is talking really about about the idea of harness the power of the financial sector. We need policies that nurture sustainable, sustainable finance and mobilize funds for green investments. Now, all of us that have been in this space understand that what we're hearing out of her in that is how can we move to a frictionless payment system, a digital system, and upgrade, not build back the old, but build back the new, a new Bretton Woods moment. That's the term and the phrase they like to use at the IMF. And look, this all goes hand in hand. We see the FSB, right, making these recommendations to the Federal Reserve. They're really preparing to bring on a global stable coin. Okay. And now what I find really interesting about that is I just got shared this from, I guess it's Neatsbo. It's N-I-E-T-Z-B-U-X, I believe. And uh, thank you for sending me this. Also want to give a special thank out to Spencer H and Big Skinny. These guys are really amazing. So I just wanted to give them a shout out because I meant to do it the other day. But um, looking at this, Senior Director Central Bank Engagements. Uh-oh, there's a couple things to note here. Okay. Senior Director Central Bank Engagements at Ripple. This is about to reveal to you, at least on one level, exactly what Ripple is about to do. Ripple is looking for a proven leader to lead our strategy, partnerships and project work with central banks around the world, with an initial focus on supporting their central bank digital currency, CBDC initiatives on XRP Ledger. You need a minute to take that in. Companies like Ripple don't post jobs for things that aren't getting done. It's the reason that you look on Ripple's website and you don't see a listing up there for somebody hiring an underwater basket weaver because they don't need one. What they do need, however, is a senior director to deal directly with central bank engagement. And it's about dealing with central bank digital currencies initiatives being built on the XRP ledger. 
In this role, you will define and lead Ripple's strategy with central banks, build relationships with and educate central bankers around the world, and secure and manage partnerships with the central banks to build and deploy projects. The key to success will be close collaboration and coordination with other teams at Ripple with product of uh, engineering, legal, regulatory relations to marketing and communications, etc. You will serve as Ripple's industry thought leader on the intersection of digital assets, blockchain technology, central banks, including the future of CBDCs. I tell you, <laughs> I'm not giving financial advice but if there was ever that little spot in your tummy that made you feel like, I'm not so sure, and this doesn't put it to bed, nothing will. All right, that's going to do it for me. This is pretty amazing. Ripple Plan revealed right here as far as I'm concerned. They're hiring, and they want somebody to be able to engage with the central banks to help them build on the XRP ledger, which I think has probably already begun for quite some time if they're at that place now to hire a specific senior director for it. Oh, and by the way, I have a killer letter that uh, Lisa from the XRP community has written. Shout out to Lisa. It is a great call to action, and it is a blanket letter that you could fill in your name. I'm going to fill in my name, send it to you your uh, representative in your area, and it will be to encourage blockchain, crypto adoption, and stable coins, and the whole bit, and getting clarity on assets like XRP, and support for Brian Brooks in the nominated role of Comptroller for Currency for the next four or five years. So thank you to Lisa, and I will be showing that probably uh, tomorrow's video, or either morning or afternoon. So that's going to do it for me. We're going places, and we're going some very special places, ladies and gentlemen. It highly looks like the central banks are about to build and launch central bank digital currencies off of the XRP ledger. That's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe. Share with somebody you know. Leave a comment below. And make sure you check out the links in the description box and the comment section. There's really great stuff in there. There is a uh, Black Friday special. That will really be your benefit from Clinton Donnelly, the crypto tax fixer. Click on that link. It will be in the description and comment box. And also a Black Friday special on Pure VPN. Help protect your anonymity online. PureVPN is one of the many layers of protection that I use while I am online. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'll catch you all on the next one.